How the Antichrist will gain power over the world. The Antichrist spirit is preparing the world and the church for his coming. What people commonly believe about the Antichrist is that he will simply appear and take over the world. He's not going to come into the world and overwhelm the world with his demonic charisma. The Bible tells us that his spirit is in the world, and his spirit is hard at work preparing the hearts of men for him, preparing society and culture for him. Look at these two verses. 1 John 4.3 And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. And even now already is it in the world. And even now already is it in the world. And 2 Thessalonians 2.7 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Is already at work. Is already at work. But the one who now restrains it will continue until he is taken out of the way. It's already started, but people don't see it yet. The two verses I have just read tell us that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. Whilst the Christian world has been looking for the Antichrist himself to take center stage, Satan has been pouring out the spirit of the Antichrist to go out into the world and prepare the way for him, to create a society and culture that is ready to worship him. I have said this once, and I believe it is worth saying again. I believe one of the biggest supporters of the Antichrist will be the Christian Church, which is spoken of in 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 through 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is the Church that will welcome him and support him, and will endorse him when he comes. Because this type of Church is not a part of the body of Jesus Christ, but is a part of the body of the Antichrist. Have you not seen how churches are cropping up teaching things completely contrary to the Word of God? Completely and utterly against the Word of God. These churches are not birthed by the Holy Spirit. They are birthed by the Spirit of the Antichrist. I could go as far as saying that the Spirit of the Antichrist is going across the world planting churches. The Antichrist wants to integrate himself fully into the world system, especially the church. By the time he comes, people will be ready. By the time he is revealed, people's hearts would have received him. He won't be an alien to the world. He will be a part of the culture. He will be a part of the very fabric of society. A lot of believers of these days think the Antichrist will just come and overpower the world. But no, no. His spirit will prepare the world and the church to accept him when he comes. Now in this sermon, we're going to focus on how the spirit of the Antichrist is going to prepare the way for the Antichrist in the church. The Technique of the Antichrist The first method is through false prophets. Matthew 24 verses 4 through 5 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24 11, And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Jesus told you and I to be aware of false prophets. Not everyone who stands up on a pulpit is a follower of Christ. Not everyone who has a large following is a follower of Christ. Be careful who you listen to. Don't just allow anyone to preach to you. Don't open up your ears to everyone. Let me put my point across to you. What is the spirit behind false prophets? When they are preaching to you, what spirit are they filled with? They are filled with the spirit of Antichrist. Now my point is this. Imagine time after time you are constantly listening to false prophets sponsored by the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist will slowly move you away from the right path, and this is happening to so many people. Jesus said, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Ensure you are not a part of those that will be deceived. The second method. The spirit of the Antichrist will force himself into the hearts of many churches because many will have itching ears. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 through 4 says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. 
We are in the days that people will chase after their desires shamelessly. Their ears are blocked to the truth, and their hearts repel conviction from that originating from God's word. They prefer to be taught lies. They want pastors who will tell them they have the liberty to sin. Rather than being taught the fundamentals of the Christian faith, they prefer to be taught 10 rules of success, freedom to sin, and all sorts. People want to hear things that make them feel good and appeal to their sensory desires. It doesn't matter if it's in accordance with God's word. What matters is how it makes them feel. The gospel message is not there for your self-esteem. The gospel message is not there for your self-glorification. The gospel message is not there for you to buy a Lamborghini. But the gospel message is there to deliver you from the power of sin. The gospel message is true. If Jesus Christ is alive, you can't live as though he is dead. If God has spoken, you can't live as though he hadn't. If the Bible is true, you can't put yourself in a place where you don't read it or listen to it. If the gospel is so, you can't live like anybody who thinks it isn't so. Do you submit to Jesus Christ? Do you accept the message as true truth? Do you accept the message in such a way that you put your whole weight upon it for your acceptance and your standing with God? If the gospel message is about sin, as it is, then you can't love sin. If sin is so awful that God must condemn it, either in the sinner or in his son, then you can't live loving sin. Any church that avoids the subject of sin, or encourages a sinful lifestyle, is energized by the very spirit of the Antichrist. It is energized by the very man of sin spoken of in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones said, and I quote, There is nothing that surprises me and astonishes me anymore about so many people within the church, about the way in which they dislike the doctrine of sin. And they say, why must you always be pressing sin? My friend here is the answer. Sin is a problem as great as this, that it necessitated the action of the three persons in the Blessed Holy Trinity to deal with it. It is the only explanation. Sin is such a profound problem that it involves all that to deal with it. Sin is not a simple problem. It is not a light problem. No, no. Sin is as profound a problem as this. That a council was held before time, that the Son had come into the world from eternity and had to go through the suffering of the cross to deal with sin. As God's children, we must always walk in discernment. By God's Spirit, we should censor our thoughts and desires. What are those things we long to hear? Why do we listen to the preachers we listen to? Is it because they strengthen our root in God, or because they make us feel good? Is it because they develop our relationship with God, or because they make us motivated? To prepare the world for his imminent reign, the Antichrist has dispensed numerous false preachers into the world to satisfy the craving of many people. False prophets who don't speak of sin, False prophets who encourage the congregation to live and stay in their sin. The Antichrist is on a mission to saturate the world with his system as much as he can. If we, the saints, are not sensitive as we ought to be, we will be blown away by the devil's deception. The final method the Antichrist spirit is using to prepare the church for it to accept him is through persecution. Mark 13 verses 9 and 13 say, you must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. The world will change, and there will come a time where it won't be easy to be a Christian. Those of us who live in a first world country like America, Canada, or the United Kingdom, and a lot of other nations, it's been relatively easy for us to be Christian in these countries for centuries, in comparison to other countries. There are countries where it will cost you your life for confessing Christ. But in this country we live in, we don't face that level of persecution. But the Bible tells us it won't be like that forever. In the last days, the world will be against the church and laws of God, and not everyone will be able to stand the persecution. We can see already the church today is being persecuted in many subtle ways. Can you not see it? The believer is now caught in the middle of two worlds. We are often tempted to let down our standards for the sake of acceptance. And that is the plan of the Antichrist spirit, 
He wants to lower the standards of the church from the word of God to the standard to the laws of this world. A man who will be friends with God will definitely be an enemy of the world. As John 15, 19 says, If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. If we give in to the pressure here, we'd share the same fate as unbelievers in the end. Our reward lies in enduring the persecution and rejection from the world. Therefore, let your focus be on the reward ahead and not the present pain. How do we prepare against this? As our Lord Jesus left the world, he promised us the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us walk through the world. The only way we can remain steadfast in these last days is by drawing from the wisdom and strength of the Holy Spirit. When we are sensitive to him and led by him, it will be impossible for us to fall for the scheme of the spirit of the Antichrist. As all activities on earth wrap up for the coming of the Antichrist, we must also stand firm and remain on the alert for the coming of our Lord Jesus. This is a consciousness we have to maintain as we sojourn on earth. Even as we consciously put in the effort, we should also put our trust in the one who has called us. He is faithful to uphold us. Jude confirms this in his epistle to the church. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and will present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to he only wise God, our Savior. Jude 24 and 25.